Hello, welcome to August 22nd, 2023. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily good life meditation. This is something that I do each and every morning, a little bit after waking up. It's now uh, 4.46 a.m. I do this to remember my life's um, objectives and principles, those which are outlined in my book, Going Alone. I also use this time to reflect on the last 24 hours to see how I did with the challenges and opportunities that I met. And I also prepare for the coming day. I finish by uh, seeing if I'm ready to die. But before doing that, all of that, let's uh, read uh, two poems from John Keats. First, we'll read yesterday's poem through and through because we already studied it. It's a bit of a long poem. And then we'll read a, <coughs> a new poem. Excuse me. Okay, yesterday's poem is called um, uh, Fragment of the Castle Builder. A dialogue between the castle builder and someone named uh, Bernadine, a man. Castle builder. In short, convince you that otherwise, sorry, in short, convince you that however wise you may have grown from convent libraries, I have, by many yards at least, been carding a longer skein of wit in convent garden. So interesting how uh, waiting a day that it's, it's settled in and it becomes clear. It's like playing the guitar. You know, if you struggle with a, a passage, a little riff, and then give it a day, uh, it kind of just comes. I see this better now. You know, no matter how you've been studying um, in, your, uh, uh, in your convent libraries, um, I've been learning quite a bit myself in Covent Garden, you know, you know more, more pedestrian, you know, more uh, um, everyday life. I'm going to try that again. In short, convince you, it's a tough, this, this first line is tough though. In short, convince you that however wise you may have grown from convent libraries, I have, by many yards at least, been carding a longer skein of wit in convent gardens. Garden. Bernadine. Excuse me. A very Eden that place, a very Eden that same place must be, pray, what daemon, whose lordship legacy... What have you caught it? What have you convents in that Gothic aisle? Pray, pardon me, I cannot help but smile. I'm doing a terrible job at this. Okay, it's a, let me try this again. It's a dialogue between the castle builder and Bernadine. This is a reference to an old, I believe it's an old Italian story. And I've got to get the cadence, the back and the forth, but there's tough language in here. Let's try this again. Castle builder. In short, convince you that however wise you may have grown from convent libraries, I have, by many yards at least, been carting a longer skein of wit in convent garden. Oh, now I see it. Convent libraries in convent garden. Now, interesting, I thought that Bernadine was a man. What would he be doing in convent libraries? Bernadine. It looks like I'm not going to just sit and read it, am I? Bernadine, a very Eden, that same place must be. Pray, what demonese, I can't pronounce that word right, demesne, dem, demesne. Pray, what demesne, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a domain of a minus. Gee, I can't read my writing from yesterday. I defined what demesne, domain of a. I can't, I can't read what I wrote. <laughs> Domain of a whatever the heck. Pray what to men I say, whose lordship's agency, what, have you convents in the goth, in that gothic isle? Pray, pardon me, I cannot help but smile. Castle Builder. Sir, convent garden is a monstrous beast. From morning, four o'clock to twelve at noon, it swallows cabbages without a spoon. And then, from twelve till two, this Eden maid is a promenade for cooks and ancient ladies. And then, for supper, instead of soup and poaches, it swallows chairmen, dames, and hackney coaches. In short, sir, tis a very place for monks, for it containeth twenty thousand punks, prostitutes, which any man may number for his sport by following fat elbows up a court. Oh, I see that now, falling fat elbows up according to the visual. <sighs> Whatever. Hmm. 
and such like nonsense would I pass an hour with random friar and rake upon his tour. Hmm. Or one of few of that imperial host who came unmaimed from the Russian front. And I don't remember why, but I put this whole passage here in yellow. Let's see what it is, what deliciousness there is. Tonight I'll have my friar. Let me think about my room. I'll have it in the pink. It should be rich and somber, and the moon just in its midlife, in the midst of June. Oh, I remember why. Because he's painting this picture of being in the room as the sun has gone down and the night is coming, and he's telling the servants, no, no candles yet. I just want the moonlight. Again, tonight I'll have my friar. Let me think about, think about my room. I'll have it in the pink. It should be rich and somber, and the moon just in its midlife, in the midst of June, should look through four large windows and display clear but four golden fishes in the way, their glassy diamonding on Turkish floor. The tapers keep aside an hour, the tapers keep aside an hour or more to see what else the moon alone can show. While the night breeze doth softly let us know, my tarot terrace is well bowered with oranges. Oh my God, this whole book was worth that. What that passage there. Upon the floor, the dullest spirit sees a guitar riband and a lady's glove beside a crumpled leaved, crumpled leaved tale of love, a tambour frame and Venus sleeping there, all finished, but some ringlets of her hair, a vile bowstrings torn crosswise upon a glorious folio of an acron. A skull upon a mat of roses lying, inked purple with law, a song concerning dying. An hourglass on the return amid the trails of passion flower, just in time there sails. A cloud across the moon, the light bringing in, and see what more fantasy can win. It is a gorgeous room, but somewhat sad. The draperies are so as though they had been made for Cleopatra's winding sheet. Then opposite the steadfast eye doth meet a spacious looking glass upon whose face in letters raven somber you may trace old men, men, tekel, ufrashen, Greek busts and statuary have ever been held by the finest spirits fitter far than vast, vase, grotesque, or Siamesian Siam jar. Therefore, tis sure a want of attic taste that I should rather love a gothic waste of eyesight on zinc-colored potter's clay than on the marble fairness of old Greece, my tablet coverlets of Jason's fleece, and black Numidian sheep's wool should be wrought, gold black and heavy from the llama brought. My ebon sofa, sofa should delicious be with down from Leda's signet prodigy, progeny. My pictures, all Salvador's, save a few of Titan's portraiture, and one, though new, of Hayden's in its fresh magnificence. My wine, oh, oh good, tis here at my desire, and I must sit to supper with my friar. This is a really, really good poem. In fact, I'm not even going to continue, even though I studied the next poem already. Um, new vocabulary and some got some yellow passages too, delicious yellow. I'm going to hold off because I want to read this poem again tomorrow. There's a lot in there, man. Mm. Gosh, that's what life is delicious. There's no summit higher than this in my life experience. And great poetry and literature. It's like this all the way through the House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Yesterday I sat out in the garden strumming my guitar in the sunset and as I strummed I had ChatGPT sitting beside me and I asked it to imagine them, tell me a story, a short story, two paragraphs of uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne playing a guitar. I don't know if he played a guitar. 
on the porch of the house of the Seven Gables, one of a setting of his um, his own fiction, perhaps based on a real place, but nonetheless, I could see the, the big house with a great tree and the old woman peeking from behind the curtains on the first floor. And I pictured the, the grinder, the organ grinder, with its monkey on its shoulder, which I didn't tell ChatGPT about. And I asked it to have uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne play a guitar in the, in the porch at sundown and beside the tree. You know, the trees, great trees there, and the street and the organ grinder and the old woman. And it told me it just had painted a picture for me. Then I did it again as I strummed my guitar. I asked it to do it again, but this time invite Samuel Johnson, Dr. Samuel Johnson, to Dr. Johnson to arrive and say something profound. And he did. I then invited uh, Thoreau to join, and then myself. And by the end, I had a setting where the uh, four of us sat with the old woman, of course, not being excluded from the setting. She'd be welcome to join, but it was not her style for the book. She would rather gaze from, from with, with fearful looks from behind the uh, glass. And the five of us, the four of us seated, the one watching and the organ grinder, and I knew that ChatGPT knew the story when it described the organ grinders walking along the street and the, the, the sound, and when, uh, without my mentioning the monkey, the organ, the ChatGPT placed the monkey on the grinder's shoulder, and I knew, it knew. That was my own setting, like the Casa Builder thing, you know? I had my little glass of wine, I had my guitar in my hand, laying back in my Adirondack chair with the sun going down, and chat GPT inventing fictions that never existed for my delicious enjoyment. Now I could ask it to go back, and I still got it on the phone. I could ask it to transpose that whole last paragraph into a, a sonnet. Hmm, that sounds good. Anyway, I've got stuff to do. Let's do the good life. Seven of, oh, but yesterday. And yesterday was a fine day. Slept well, worked hard, um, enjoyed the day, had great walks with my wife, went to the beach, swam in the ocean. Uh, there were dolphins. Uh, I had a really nice day. And then I told you about my evening already. Let's do the good life. Seven objectives. To be always ready to die make good and effective use of my time, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles, to cultivate good emotional reactions, to perform good actions, to recognize my true limits and my true opportunity, to do just one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully. That's all seven. Now my 34 principles. War, reason, homunculus, anchor hold, home of good and evil, purpose, atomic principle, principle of nature, the pirate ride, maturity, the social principle, principle of family, public speaking, distraction, agency and the great indifference, the best seat in the house. Is that right? Yeah. No. I skipped a whole group, didn't I? No, I got it already. Temperance. I did the temperance bit, right? Yeah. Okay. After agency, after the best seat in the house comes the restless man, the path of wildness, the great life adventure, the risk of avoiding risk, sin and damnation, complete oblivion, the season of philosophy, the script writing, I almost stumbled, the bullseye, the uphill climb, arena and utility, nothing is enough, and the principle of fun. Okay, now, today, it's a Tuesday, got a full day of work. I'll do my work. I'll have my break in the morning, my break in the afternoon, and my lunch with my wife. Then I'll have a nice walk with my wife in the evening. But before I go for a walk with my wife, I'll go to the beach and go for a nice swim. I'll swim out in the deep water alone. Good way to live.
I'll breathe deeply while I can. And I'll sit on the sand afterwards, dripping wet, drying slowly in the fading summer warmth. I'll read my book a little bit, and then I'll meditate ramrod back straight, looking out at the horizon with the waves crashing, letting my thoughts measure my breath. It's good use of time. My life story. I'm at that transitional period at the end of my career, about to have a six-month adventure in the Prius, which I don't give much thought to lately, but I need to start thinking about that. And then uh, after that, I'll, I'll go retire in Japan. As for um, readiness for death, three questions. Are my affairs in order? Absolutely. Are my relationships sound? Perfectly sound. Are my, uh, am I, are, is my life's work complete? My book is done. Yeah, I can die any moment now. I hope I get to live another day. I have a lot to do, and a lot yet that I want to do, and I'm having a lot of fun. But um, if I do go today, then I won't look back. I, I, it's easy to say from here, right? But if it comes upon me, I think I can go to death without a, 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 lot, a backwards glance. Not looking back at the world, not looking back at my family, not looking back at uh, uh, unfinished uh, desires or, uh, or, or tasks. Um, just going into oblivion. Um, head head first into oblivion yeah I can do that it's been a good life and with that my life is done if not finished I wish you all the best be safe but not too safe I like the way that ended it kind of just flowed in huh <laughs> it's good to talk about head I like that that, that that head first into oblivion that's a good way to end first write that down I'll, I'll let you go take care